coming up today on this week's episode of the Canadian Real Estate Show. Donald Trump is the 47th president of the United States of America. Massive brawl at Hindu Temple in Brampton after Khalistani lunatics showed up to protest in front. Toronto real estate prices roll back to 2021 levels near technical crash. Metro Vancouver real estate markets on the upswing after the rate cuts. Developer Sam Mizrahi given creditor protection on a luxury bird with blah blah blah. blah. What the f was that? <laughs> Developer Sam Mizrahi given creditor protection for luxury Wellington Street West condo in Ottawa. And with condos not selling. Canada faces worsening home ownership crisis. All this and more on this episode of the Canadian Real Estate Show. Let's go! We're f***ing actors, man. This is what we I do. I can't smile. This thing's ripping yeah, off it's, my mine's face. Mine's peeling off my face. <laughs> Hey, what the hell? Donald Trump, who saw that coming? Everybody. Everybody, except yeah, I didn't for... talk to a single person who was like, oh, I don't think Trump's going to win this one. That's funny. I Yeah, I did. You I, did? I, yeah, and I was surprised by some of the people. But, I mean, let's be honest. There were lots of people, like millions and millions of people still, right? And yeah. what's crazy is all the people, how much the whole world really cared about it. Like how the whole world, this was. every was single one. country was talking about it on social media. Like this is the biggest election in the world. It's basically the leader of the free world. I mean, it's as much as we all want to say, you know, this and that, it's just America. We're separate. No, whoever runs the country, the largest economy in the world is the one who basically gets to, di to dictate, you know, how the rest of the country's uh, economies are going to be. At least that's how we view it, right? Well, they get to control the currency. That's the real thing, right? If that's you don't huge. control the currency, then, yeah. I mean, it's really hard to tell everybody else what to do, right? That's yeah. that. This is one of the big problems out there. But this is, I, a, I think, a win for the world, which is weird that Donald it's hard. Trump, right? It's hard to say that, you know, because everyone right now is talking about the tariffs. And obviously he told us personally on the show that he's yeah. going to tear off the heck out of us yeah. and that he's going to be taxing anything that's crossing that border that he thinks is already in the U.S. and doesn't need to be crossing the border. So or, or um, that they can produce there. Exactly. That's I what I just said. the key, right? Yeah. yeah. So is that what that's what... That's exactly what I just said. Oh, okay. You said it better, Daryl. Thank you. Obviously. And so, you know, to me, there's there's obviously some some issues with that for the Canadian economy. But I do agree with what you said there. As a as a global economy that's heading into recession, that we got all these issues. Like we need some leadership. We need somebody with a good business sense who's going to you know prevent the wars. Who's going to be uh, creating more trade. Who's going to be looking at this as a like. Let's just face it here. If everyone, this is so like, nobody wants to hear this opinion, but everyone, if everyone just lets America do what they want and run the world, the world would be a better place. No Say one likes that to hear again. that. Say that again. If, if we America, let them run the place? If they can just do what they want to do, if they can just oh, uh, trade with who they want to go with, dictate policies in certain okay. areas, let them do their thing, it'll have this sort of like harmony amongst the world that'll keep everybody in check, that'll allow us all to be able to be, you know, free. I mean, think about if the world did cooperate. There's so many countries that we could be doing business with that we're not doing business with that we could benefit from. There's a whole bunch yeah. of conflict out there that's inefficient, that's wasting money. Like war is crazy, even though the states is going to force everyone to use 2% of their uh, budget on their uh, on their armies. And obviously Canada's not doing that. So that the states really does have a um, uh, a good grip on on on. on uh, the control that they have on everybody's country on, on what they're, they're spending and their policy and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, if we're all bickering, right, nobody's working together, like, is this really a, a, a global economy that's going to go forward? And we're not in the same economy that we were five years ago. 
we're not on the same like this isn't 20 years ago this is like a major different there are so many new industries and there's so many new obstacles and there's so many new um, opportunities for people to be able to uh, take on in the world and you know we got to cooperate and i think trump is, is going to do that in my opinion subscribe to the channel right now what the heck are you waiting for so many people tk just not subscribed guys check us out on instagram spotify apple podcast check out the clips channel check out daryl's content my content drop a, a a note to me in the link below to book a call whatever thanks for watching i guess it's a it's a it's a weird world when donald trump ends up being the savior but i think like people just started to realize how fucking crazy everything is. I mean, look what happened. Biden was an idiot. So anybody well, talking to him was like, what are we doing business with these guys? Look at who's running them. Trump's smart. Like he even had Kim Jong uh, Un or Il or I can't remember which one he is. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Un, the um, uh, dictator of North Korea meeting with him and talking to him about business and stuff. Sorry, Daryl, my mustache, the glue has been dissolved gone. from gone. my lip sweat. Gone. Uh, He's even got the North Korean. He 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 had people in line. That's for sure. Yeah, he had people's He'll respect. Get China in in order. China wants to do business. They don't want to go to war. Just give them Taiwan and whatever other countries that they're saying are belonging to them, and move on with life. Like I'm sorry, nobody wants to hear that in Taiwan. I know. Shout out to my friends in Taiwan. Well, so going back to what you were saying, by letting them do whatever the hell they want. Um, I mean, I, I can't totally disagree because it, it appears that people left without uh, checked authority do some pretty naughty shit, right? Yeah, we, we, but, I mean, but, but they're not trying to take over Canada. They might try to take over Mexico. I don't know. I've heard some rumors, but they, they're not trying to take over Canada. They've got sort of like economic control already. They're not going overseas to take anybody over. They just want to make sure that they stabilize regions, steal a little bit of oil, you know what I mean, drain some of their resources, whatever, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, they're not going around killing people unless there's a war that, that needs to be had. So if everybody can just control, and this is a totally uh, personal opinion of mine today in November 2020, 2024, 2024. This could change soon. But based on everything that I'm, I'm, I'm aware of right now in the world and how crazy things are, nobody wants people to control them. But if we're leaving everything up to them to uh, make their own decisions, we're causing a lot of problems. Well, and so they've too many, called... too many wars, too many conflicts going on right now. That's that's not that's not good. That's not good for the children, Daryl. Well, they've already called out Canada as being, um, you know, uh, suppressive and non-democratic. -demo and t tyrannical and like they've already put that out there the trump administration so they've got their eyes on their little brother to the north who's been very naughty yeah. and very weird Canada lately. needs to fall in line you know what i mean right? the truckers uh, convoy and well, trump like, all was the little behind things. that that convoy he was cool he thought that was great and then all of a sudden you know people are getting trampled in wheelchairs by rcmp officers yeah and i mean we've talked that to death but I mean, well, maybe no one will get to watch this because they seem to be suppressing things about Trump. So hopefully we didn't screw ourselves here. But the, the, well, why don't we talk to him? Why don't we see what uh, what he thinks about? That's a great one. idea. I yeah. think he's ready get for the, us. Let's, is he ready? Uh, to, let's did see. we get uh, the guy Mr. to call him in? Well, let's just make sure he's ready to go. Mr. Trump, are, are you there? Are you ready? Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us once again, two weeks in a row. Daryl and TK, I am so happy to be back on your tremendous show. I thought Joe Rogan has influence. He doesn't hold a candle to you guys. Your podcast pushed me over the finish line for the win. Thank God I didn't go into going to Tom's story show. That would have been a disaster. Did you know the whole time that you were going to win this election? Daryl, that was a beautiful question. Such a smart guy. It didn't take a genius to see that I was going to beat the crap out of that moron at the polls. Kamala is a loser. The Democrats are losers. I am a winner and I won in tremendous fashion. It's time to make the world great again. It's tariff time. President Trump. I'd just like to say a message speaking for Canadians on behalf of every Canadian. We're happy that you won. Congratulations. We hope that the relationship going forward with Canada is going to be a strong and mutually beneficial one. And, uh, you know, Toronto um, is a big city. It's basically a major city already in the U.S. So if you're going to do anything to Canada, 
um, you know, just remember that, you know, a lot of people in Toronto support the U.S. And, uh, you know, we're really great to have you on the show. TK, thank you very much. I really like your style. I don't know if you said anything, but I love you anyways. I love Canada. I love Canadians, not the new ones, but the rest of them. I am going to get that Trudeau character to get her shit together or get the fuck out. I've had enough of his shit. Daryl, your Forest Hill project is fantastic. What a beautiful project. It's going to be huge. I wish I was a partner. You have my number. Give me a call. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the damn bell. And whatever you do, don't watch the Tom Story Show. Thanks again, gentlemen. Thank you once again, President Trump. Uh, so nice of him, Daryl. Like unbelievable, this, right? What a what a kind heart to come and support the Canadian real estate show like that. Yeah, unbelievable. So, so nice of him to mention the deal in Forest Hill. Like that wasn't expected at all, was well, it? Well, it's a it's an international prestigious uh project that definitely is going to be you know sold out once it's released That's unless right. you know somebody knows somebody and can get in there beforehand it's on, so, it's on the radar get on the yeah, list just in case absolutely yeah get on the TK, list holy cow are we going places trump two weeks in a row we are just unbelievable We're on fire so you know, so it seems like things are kind of moving. I saw a lot of numbers from across the country that are, I mean, I guess, depending on your perspective and how deep you get into the articles, you know, Canada seems to be on the rebound. Interest interest rates affect optimism. Like if you look at interest rates on a actual mathematic level, the variable rate holders who are, you know, in a Scotia Bank mortgage where their rates adjust, their payments have now changed. They're saving people, money. People who are on static now. payments yeah. are um, paying less interest or lower amortization. Happy days. People who are on fixed, unaffected. People who unaffected. get fixed mortgages, those rates haven't really changed all too much amongst, like, you know, maybe a quarter, half a point at best. Um, when you started over the looking. last Over the last, you know, few months. Um, the people who are going to get variable rates, obviously that's affected by prime, the discount, you know, all that kind of stuff too. So, you know, there's a little bit of impact there. So really has it woken up the market? I mean, if you ask, I guess the right people, they'll tell you, wow, it's fantastic. Well, I'll tell you right now in September, things were slow in October, the first three weeks, they were busy. Things were selling that had been sitting on the market, and we definitely had a lot more activity. We doubled our sales in October, over double than we did last year. October was my best month, best month this year. It was a good month. But the start of November hasn't showed the same amount of activity. Well, so, like, just over a week in, you know, we're not seeing an escalation of, you know, further and further sales. It was just the fall market happened this year in October. That's what happened. The fall market happened in October. I don't know if yeah. that's actually what happened, but it definitely seemed like well, we got a that's nice That's basically what the numbers so far it. shows. We'll know in November. If November numbers show similar trajectory and um, results like September did, then that's exactly what it was. We had a good, we had a good October. It's become Boom. abundantly clear that our audience doesn't really care about what we say here in Toronto, the I center know. of the universe. But thank God. Bring it in have help. Yeah, we bring it in the big guns. Yep, we got a studio, we got some people, we got some staff, we Spread got things going on here, guys. So why don't we go to uh, Kip Conahan? Kip, let us know what's happening out west. Kip Conahan here. Hey, Daryl and Chige. <laughs> well, today I'm coming right from the studio to report what's going on in the greater Vancouver area. You know, they're saying that the sales have started to return after interest rates started to come down. Wow, that's fantastic. We got 2,600 sales and almost 14,000 listings. This is 5.3 months of inventory, boys. It's a buyer's market. What are they talking about? Why do they always say the market? Well, oh, it's reported by the head of the real estate board. <laughs> now I get it. Hey, boys, good to see you. Have a great time today on the show. And remember, if it's in the news, it's got to be true. Another amazing segment from our very own Kip Conahan. Thanks, that Kip. That guy is just getting better and better with age, isn't he, TK? Absolutely. So, so it's kind of weird got what's a point, going though. on out there, right? Like yeah. it sounds good from the headline, but uh, doesn't. There's a lot of inventory still out there. Yeah, right? prices came down a little bit. Prices came down. Realtors Sales pump are up. The stuff out of the, yeah, it's pump a the crap out of this market anytime they can. That's their job. If you're the president of the real estate board, look at the press releases from 1992. Toronto Real oh. Estate Board. What okay? are they saying? 
they were saying that you know buyers have returned to the market and that you know it's about to you know turn its corner it's reached a bottom we see all sorts of good prospects for uh, next month being the best month in sales and it went down for three more years after that. <laughs> ah, because, you know, these guys know what they're That's talking about. That's the real about. estate board president's job. What are they going to yeah. say? Don't buy real estate, guys. It's not a good time. Seems yeah. like if you buy now, it's going to be worth less when you move in. They're don't not going to say that. tell the truth. That's just yeah. crazy. We don't like the truth. TK, and that's why well, Vancouver we're... prices are actually coming down. If you look at the benchmark rate, they're they're, they're sliding down, and uh, you know, even though you got some more sales compared to October, I just think that there was a slow October in 2023 versus the October we had in 2024. Doesn't really show plan it back then. It's why you got to look at like this, you know, broader perspective. You know, you got to look at the end of the year. Okay, prices January 1st to December 31st, up or down. Otherwise, you're following it month to month, and you're just like this. You ever watch Santo's channel, and you look how like his stats are? They're, like they're too, sh it's too small of a window. So even though you think, oh, I'm getting week to week stats, and he's a great, he's great at what he does, and I'm not yeah. taking anything away from him, but it's kind of useless to be looking at week to week stats. Right. Sure. There's just too many variables and you go, oh, it's up. Oh, it's down. Oh, it's up. But by the end of the month, you're like, oh, it actually went up like consistently this month for like, you know, whatever, 1.3 percent. And if I had known that information, I probably would have made a better decision. But instead, I was like, oh, I went down. Oh, my God. I know. But we can we, we've, we, we keep talking about the same thing. We're comparing to last year. Like, who cares? It's the trend. Mm. It's like, well, no, they talked about September too. going right. They talked what? about September, too. But but so anyway, so I guess things are looking up in bc Listen, or, i am dealing with really people tell. here the the developers are dealing with the same problems in bc massive amounts of um uh Condo receivership stock, and uh, power sales condo stock is, is 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 coming up people who are renewing their mortgages are facing the same pressures in vancouver as they are in toronto yeah. i'm still going on those appointments every Higher single week prices where people are like i need to sell because of my uh Mortgage Pitted. payment. Oh, right. Mortgage payment. Mortgage payment. One way or the next. Yeah. These are the things that people are dealing with today. Those problems take years to go away because there will be people who are still renewing two years from now who bought in 2022 at a, you know, one point something interest rate. But okay? I, I kind of think if the price of their home hasn't gone up, probably gone down if, it, if they bought peak, then they're, when they go renew, it's going to be like, geez, I still have this huge mortgage and now my payment from 1.8% is up to, let's say something reasonable, 3.5%, 4%, whatever it is, that's a big increase to their monthly payment. That means that they're going to be taking that money out of the economy. They're not going to be spending money. They're not going to be buying things. And that over time, you know, that takes a lot of the wind out of the sails of the economy in, in a country. And that's what we're dealing with right now in Canada. I got government's spending that... all their money on debt. Con the consumers and citizens are all spending their money on debt. We're just servicing debt. You're fucking chatty today, Brent. Holy cow. Yeah. I think in Vancouver, especially, like if we think that we have a, uh, um, like, uh, the demand in Vancouver, like who wants to really live there in those condos, right? Like, the, I, isn't that a far more speculative market than even Toronto, even though maybe we have more inventory here right now? Like their prices are nuts. Nothing happens in Vancouver. Nothing's produced in Vancouver. Nobody's head office is in Vancouver. There's no Bay Street in Vancouver. Like what the fuck is going on out in BC that that thing is the second best? Like why is Calgary not the second Foreign best? Buyers. What? Yeah. It's Foreign a bunch buyers. of bullshit. So isn't that whole situation even worse than here in Toronto while we're talking about BC? Or trying to? Yeah, you would assume that. I mean, they got 5.3 months of inventory overall, but that's a mix between condos and freehold. So, you, you, you know, you'd assume that. And, um, you know, the bottom line is um, the people who are buying, right, are people who right now are here in Canada because there's no foreign buyers. There's right? no so foreign that's, buyers. That actually is... represents the amount of people who are living in the greater Vancouver area who are looking to um, live or rent or whatever it is in that like invest in that in that uh, city because there's no foreign there's no foreign investment so i mean the foreign investors jacked up the prices and that definitely happened for years in vancouver definitely happened in toronto here as well but it doesn't but it's impossible for it to be happening right now but more people want to live in toronto right so it's like won't our stock get absorbed quicker than the shit sitting around over there yeah but there's a lot of speculation out there
There's so that's what you so said. So much. there's a ton of people out there who are just like real estate focused. And they seem to have a lot more issues too. They always, like I remember when they had um, in 2017, when the market was going crazy, they had people flipping uh, paper. So it was like, you know, they'd buy it off the seller who'd been there forever. They paid $200,000. They were getting offered $1.8 million. They think, man, I got it. You know, I made it. Then that guy would flip it to someone else for two point four before the closing date. Right. And, and and people were like, what the heck is going on? And real estate agents started doing that, making all this money. Yeah. And everyone was like, what the heck is going on? I hired you to sell my house. You bought it off me, and then you flipped it for 600 grand more. You crook. Yeah. So, like, they have weird things like that. They have a lot more sketchy real estate business going on in Vancouver than Toronto. And there's always people sort of like, there's one recent one where the, the lady had her husband do work for her and that he was doing like licensed real estate work without, without a license, like things like that. I'm not saying it doesn't happen in Ontario, but definitely a lot of, um, Calgary is the, the wild west and, uh, Vancouver is like, they produce a lot of shit know, in Calgary, like lot, in Alberta. Like why isn't Alberta the second doesn't, why, why don't they have the second hottest real estate market in Canada all the time? Like, yeah. but yeah, it's proximity to the foreign currencies. Yeah. Yeah. It's also a beautiful need to place. Get Vancouver is a beautiful place with the mountains. Beautiful and, place. And There's else. no others. Yeah. Yeah. But like the other side of the hill is uh, Calgary. No? Yeah. Just head to Calgary guys. Here's, uh, here's great on. advice. Just well, and so, so while mountain, we get to Calgary, well, we have that kind of scenario going on out West in British Columbia. Yeah. And we all know what's going on here in Toronto. It's a goddamn mess. Although the numbers looked fantastic from some perspectives in Toronto. But what is, I think, on most people's minds that watch the show, probably nobody except for the one guy that messaged me. But we never talk about Quebec. And there's three people that want to hear what's going on. Because, I mean, it's a different planet, Quebec, right? So we took it upon ourselves, TK. I think it was a smart move. We've got a uh frank brought in another guy in the studio just to okay. be able to uh give you guys a little bit of taste of quebec you know what i mean a little taste of quebec hopefully which you is... can understand what the heck he's saying but uh otherwise uh i can't understand him? a word that comes out of his mouth but uh eve saint croissant if uh if if, if you're ready we're gonna hand it to you bienvenue et bon matin Mon nom est Yves Saint Croissant, pas croissante, tabernacle. Je suis ici pour vous. Je pense que le market dans la belle Provence est chaud, très très chaud. Je suis très enchanté de être ici avec vous. Merci beaucoup. Real estate. Show. Très, très show. Dans la belle Provence. Les sales en haut 44%. Oui, oui. Show. Très, très show. Merci. Je suis Yves Saint-Croisson de Montréal. Au revoir. Merci. Bonjour. Adios. No. Well, Daryl, that was um, interesting. Yeah. I can say thanks, Eve. We appreciate it. Why don't we just give people a little bit more uh, information there? So, depth on that. You know, you know, okay, we got, uh, you know, more sales in October, like, you know, the rest of the country, 44% increase. Amazing. That's right? crazy. So that's all the things that, uh, you know, real estate boards want to hear. And obviously that amount of transactions does lead to having, uh, you know, why pressure on prices, right? But why so much in, in there? Like, well, I mean, the whole world in October, 2023 might've been a little bit, uh, you know, nervous about what the market was doing and so this year we're seeing the same pattern happen throughout all the major cities so it's most likely just a um more of a, a economical phenomenon than anything else than something specific in in the market so but there are people guess trying... what? just had interest rates get lower daryl so i well, wonder but... if those two things are tied hand in hand well so but interest rate low but is there wasn't there something coming in january like are people trying to jump in front of some impending thing that's going to screw them up? Is there a capital gains tax? Isn't there something? No, no, what, no, no. What's interest rates January is the most 15th? likely culpable. 
I feel those like those changes coming. to the 30 year amortization and the CMHC. Oh yeah, yeah. Stuff. Are yeah. people trying to get ahead of that thing? No, that, people that should, should be distort the that. market. No? Yeah. yeah, people are waiting for it, but other people well, don't want to be in would, competition with those fuckers. Who would apply? No, that's that's no? not major enough. No, not major enough. No, okay. interest rates are the best are the best uh, explanation. Stimulus. Um, yeah, I mean, so let's let's obviously talk about Toronto, right? I mean, geez, who, how could we uh, not yeah. mention how great Toronto is? Up forty four percent. It's compared to October, so it's like identical to Montreal. It's crazy. So again, what you know, we've got people who are buying. Here? This is weird. Uh, it was a great month. We definitely had a lot of uh, increase in uh, showings and number of offers, multiple offers. So it was really a good month. Even condos started to sell a little bit here if they're priced right and everything's you know in in order. Uh, you're going to find a a good uh, a good buyer that's going to pay you a reasonable price. But if you look at the HPI composite benchmark, it's down 3.3 percent. So I mean, you know, we're heading down. The, the market. If when when I'm looking at comps from 2023, I'm saying, well, that was last year. It sold for more. So even though the interest rates came down, and you could you could have an argument that affordability's uh, better for for buyers, you are going to be looking at um, compared to when. Still, Compared to a year before, compared like yeah, a year when you before, come off such a high shit. peak. This is how this is how buyers think: is they look at well, what did the last one sell for? So in the summer of 2022, they said, "Oh, I'm going to get this for a million, and someone just paid 1.1 10 percent discount." Yes, please. Yeah. And then at the end of the year, they're just like, "Oh, that guy paid a million, but now I'm getting it for one nine fifty. All right. And so it always just becomes that sort of comparison. So as people now compare to what the last one sold for, even if it's sold the same, they think, well, the market's come down, they want to pay a little bit less, or the last one sold for less, so they want to pay the same. And that just keeps come putting pressure and pressure and pressure. But they're still willing to pay close to what the last one had sold for because that's buyer's mentality. But now because it's a year later, and that's trickled down from all the accumulation of all the sales that happened around in that neighborhood where that one sold for this and that one sold for that, and that person sold 10 houses and that person saw five houses before they bought though that is the true tell of what the market is doing and so you only see it at the end of the year you only see it a year later right i could tell you so i know we're always bashing the the year over year but it does give us that at least that perspective okay where is the market heading right now a year ago it was 3.3 percent higher which is the hpi index which is eliminating all the, that average price inconsistency prices are coming down simple yeah. That's all you need to know. So prices are coming down. More people can afford. More people are selling. And the market's moving at an accelerated pace. All of a sudden, like gangbusters in Montreal and Toronto. I wonder yeah. where else in the country is having a spike like that. Because, I mean, this market's starting to look more like a stock market than it is a, a, a real estate market. Like, how do you have a swing like that? That's crazy. Like it's it's not like it's a candy a that's for, for sales. Sale. No, but those are sales numbers. But that's a crazy increase of sales numbers. It's, all it's, of a, it's, sudden, a, it's right? a big stimulation. Sure, that's why a lot of listings got sold because all of a sudden the even though we were oversupplied at one point, um, all of a sudden more buyers entered to the market and people started to feel pressure. They oh that one sold, oh that one sold. I better act quickly on the next one, and and then the sentiment changed a little bit. But I can tell you with certainty, the first week of November, right? Like you know we got a big team. We got. 100 plus listings at any time. And so I see everybody's sales. I know when how many people make sales. And I know the rate of sales we were making in October. I know my own personal business, but there's different factors when I'm just looking at my own business. But I'm looking at my teammates and I'm just like, oh, we didn't make the same amount of sales in the first week of November as we were making on average per week in October. So already I'm like, hmm, this is... This is a sign. No, but you were not consistent through October. You came in here but going one week the, it's the best, and the next week it's the last shit. week of October was the only week I said it was slower. No, you yeah, were it was slow. You had so like a peak to, in the second week or something. Exactly. And in the middle of October, down, it was just like, what's going on right now? So again, right. I look at the average of what happened every week in October, and November isn't hitting that. So I gotta we'll think see. who the fuck wants to think about buying a house now before Christmas, especially if things are a little rocky or shaky or things aren't looking good because mm. we, we're forgetting. I mean, from the real estate perspective, as sales start climbing and all of us are like, oh, uh, I hope this continues because, uh, you know, this is really bad and it's been, you know, not so good for a while. Um, like, I fucking forgot what I was going to say. Are you a real estate agent and you're looking to make a change? Anywhere in Ontario, guess what? We're hiring. Franklin and Associates, number one team in the GTA for all REMAX teams. Number one team for all teams from all companies for a number of units sold. 
uh, throughout Toronto. So if you're looking to make a change, the best decision I ever made was to join Franklin Associates. Go to jointeamleo.com and we can set up a call. But why are they buying before Christmas? Well, why would they even think about it right now? Is is yeah. the, is the question? Like it should absolutely For die. People who off need a to cliff, sell, you're right? actually right. It starts to, in November. The conversation I'm having, I'm having with people right now who are who are going to buy and sell. They're not moving fast because they're like, well, what if I do find the right house right now? Then I gotta like start gotta getting my house ready shit, to sell right? around Christmas. So you're right, absolutely. Just first time buyers. Got even the cost. A lot of investors, their business starts to slow down. So I start dealing with a lot of investors around this time. So a lot I don't of people know. It, more. They, got, they got more attention. It feels yeah. weird to have such a spike. And then I, you know, I, I know from the, the luxury condo market somehow is still actually turning units, which is amazing. And I, I imagine it's going to increase the, the velocity because I feel like sentiment, like Trump, I think. Mm -hmm you know, people that are entrepreneurial realize that that is definitely going to go in the good direction for everybody, you know, what, but, but, but again, okay. So my whole point was that how, like we're, we're in emergency cut status right now. The recession is definitely here. You have people, you know, we're talking about people buying and selling real estate, but the people are still calling for doomsday scenario and end of times and destruction because, this is what happens when you get emergency rate cuts. Like things are really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how, that's like, why they're doing it in the first place, right? So you know, it's kind of like, like how we're do you all not, excited so, for that. It's right? confusing though. Like the that like the evidence, like you look around, things seem to be hopping. There's cars mm -hmm. and people everywhere. People are spending money. Now they're transacting like at a crazy pace all of a sudden in the real estate market. The pressure, the pressure on uh, families, the pressure on households right now, Daryl, is at an all-time high, okay? People are actually not having children anymore. Sure, because right? it's so People fucking are not having, expensive. Right? So, like, birth rates are starting to decline, right? Remember when Elon was all big on this? Maybe sure. he just wanted to he have, like, he just wanted to, like, impregnate a bunch of girls. And Probably. so he's like, listen, man, I'm just doing my part, all right? Yeah. This is, he, he came up with some I'm sort eccentric. of eccentric, yeah. Yeah, whatever. But he does talk about uh, birth rates declining in like every country. Yeah. Right. And now Canada just decided that they were going to decrease immigration and that our population is actually going to decrease 0.2%. But the, I don't and know that how people, that's possible listen, when you import people. Are people. Having, people are, well, they're, they're changing the amount of people that are being imported. People are having second thoughts about having children. Like so many couples sure. are going to have one kid instead of two, two kids instead of three. Then, well, you know, women are waiting longer for various reasons. So did now you read the window, that article there, that yeah. article, they were like, Listen, their choice was not having kids. They they made apparently a hundred and eighty thousand dollars between the two of them. Okay, but yeah. hold on a sec. Good salaries, like it's a decent amount of money. Is a great by no mo, no means in Toronto is that great. But the choice was not let's go move somewhere where we can afford and have a family. It was like we'd rather you know I guess not have a family and still live here and cry to the press that things are unfair. And mm. so this, this is crazy. Like we live in the biggest country on, on the planet or the second, at least size wise, there's tons of fucking space. There's a million people that want to build houses and buildings and shit for everybody. Like this just seems like a very easy solution and an easy problem to really solve here. But which is we build move to Saskatchewan houses, move to Saskatchewan, move to yeah. Manitoba, move yeah. for, like not in Toronto. If you make 180 grand and you want to pop out a kid or two and you think it's not enough, like you have to move to where that's enough. I think now, yeah. can you take your job with you? If you move, how far do you have to Probably move? Probably not, but how, I like how much of a pay cut are you going to take if you go there? Right? Like, where's your know. job skills? Like, how did you get that job? Can't you just go find another job out there too? I mean, maybe I'm not that realistic. I you know, maybe know it's not that easy. Works, maybe you and I are both not the most realistic people when it comes to these things. But we got ideas. We got ideas. We definitely have ideas. But you know what? Right? When everything is so like weird and crazy, and then all of a sudden the market explodes, things come across Mark Morris's desk that are mm. fairly interesting. And Just, so. Stupid, I think, if you ask me. Well, but, 
you know, pretty dumb. But this is what yeah. happens when people are busy. So stupid people are in real estate. We're gonna cut to our newest member of the team and our new segment called Rant Corner from the lawyer's desk. Well, I think we're rants from the lawyer's desk. Rants okay. from the lawyer's. Up, desk. I made up mine. Rants from the lawyer's desk. Mr. Morris. Hey guys, all right, rant from the lawyer's desk. You know, usually I talk about like systemic problems that are taking place in the market. I, I just want to focus down on the individual right now. Please, 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 agents, please stop being sloppy. I, I Now, this isn't the case for everyone, but today or this week, I had something across my desk where someone had chosen to reverse the purchase price and the deposit. That is to say, they put a purchase price of $25,000 and they put a deposit of $650,000 and they signed the agreement and neither the purchaser or the seller recognized that this mistake was there. Oh my God, like, like, Come on, you don't need to be a seasoned agent to open your eyes and understand that perhaps this wasn't the height of competence. If you're wondering, by the way, how does this kind of work out? Well, this is actually strangely not the first time that this has happened to me. This has happened several times in my career. I've seen this. So be aware, this is not a singular instance. Uh, and in all instances but one, I've seen everyone just kind of agree and they sign an amendment and, and everyone agrees that what they had agreed to pay was what they paid. One instance that I'm aware went to court, the person who was receiving a benefit refused to sign the amendment and tried to force, well, I forget what the numbers were, but well, I'll use the numbers that I was just talking about, uh, tried to force a deal for $25,000, which was insane. And of course, if you're wondering how that played out, the judge looked at him and said, this was a case of mutual mistake that's the legal term mutual mistake both sides made a mistake understanding the deal to be something else so no way in hell are we going to make the courts enforce this and uh he was wrapped with damages and the agreement was amended and everything else so you you can't go to court with not without clean hands that's that's what the lesson is but the bigger lesson is Please don't go to court. Please read through your offers. Please make sure that you are not the agent who has to get a letter from me on this basis. And uh, that is my rant of the week. So guys, I wish you the best. Yeah, that's stories from the trenches, I guess. Take care. Uh, Holy cow. TK, have you ever done that before? Have oh you my ever God. Offered like, I've somebody... got my fair share of mistakes. Like, you know what I did? I, I did a mistake recently. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll totally admit to it. Um, I always put hot water tank as a rental. Never oh. put it as owned. Oh. That way, so you put in the listing hot water tank as a rental. That way on the APS, it says hot water tank's a rental. In the event that my client's owned hot water tank, if it's a rental, it's a rental, they assume it. If the owned hot water tank is, uh, if it breaks down the week before closing, your client doesn't need to go and buy a $2,000 water, hot water tank. They can just stick in a rental instead because oh. it's already in the APS that it's included as a rental. If it's owned, it's very normal for this ha to happen and the lawyers go, oh, it turns out it's not a rental, it's owned and the buyer goes, hey, great, I don't have to rent one anymore. Okay, so it's a win-win for everybody. For some reason, this hot water tank uh, didn't lend in the, uh, AP in, the, in the listing as a rental even though like I have like a list and checklist and, and we have them sign on something but it didn't happen. And the APS, it didn't happen. Went through the APS with the client, they didn't pick up on it. So we signed an agreement that said there was no hot water take rental and that um, um, basically the buyers are expecting one to be owned. So the client called me and he says, oh my God, I just found out duh, 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 what I'm going to do. So I look over the paperwork and I said, it's uh, my responsibility. I said, that's exactly, you know, my job is to make sure that little things like this don't happen. So I said, I um, will take full responsibility and call the company, find out how much it is to buy it out and uh, I'll buy it out. I go, that's... that's literally what my job was that was my role okay right so that's what so, happens i don't know how that so, compares to uh, mark's story where they so, uh, so so he calls the hot water tank company and they send him an email and says well your hot water tank's so old to buy out zero dollars nah <laughs> tk <laughs> said, wins okay, again i right. gonna you know gonna buy that out no problem so it all that's... it all worked out for me but yeah, that but things like... happen like that but yeah, yes but how many people had that to of that gone through that to, to make it notice, to the lawyer's desk right like to process is this buyer signs agreement <laughs> sends it to seller seller accepts agreement seller's agent sends it to their brokerage buyer's agent sends it to their brokerage buyer and seller choose lawyer buyer's brokerage seller's brokerage sends to lawyer afterwards 
Where? How come Brokers, nobody picked up? admins. Like, yeah, are all those people this. got to Everybody, see it before they right? got. They should have had amendments done and everything before it even made it to the lawyers. So by the time it got to the lawyers, the lawyers would have just been like, oh, "Okay, they fixed this." Already. That's the shocking thing from my yeah. perspective, it, like, right? Yeah. It's like it's okay, fine. People make mistakes, but like, it's not like there weren't eighteen layers before the lawyer, right? Where it could have mm -hmm. or should have and normally would have got caught or, or, or noticed right that's so yeah. fucking crazy and the amount of money and what you did is the right thing because the amount of money you guys get paid to do something right which for, for well most there's actually something called errors and emissions insurance so an errors and emissions insurance covers mistakes like this so yeah. they would sue uh, me for the hot water tank i would go there and i would pay my errors and insur insurance premium which is probably a few thousand bucks and then that whole thing would get resolved so like if I just got to buy a thousand dollar water heater just to like not let all that happen and move on with life, sure. like, yeah, trust well, me. Well, and then on top of that, your insurance goes up for eternity, right? And all that Which stuff too. But I've also heard people do that with appliances. Great. I've heard agents say they forgot to include the washer and dryer or something for their buyer. And then their buyer was like, what the heck? I didn't get the washer and dryer. And they had to buy them a washer and dryer, like things like that. That's pretty annoying. But yeah, uh, yeah I mean, it, it's funny how uneducated most people are on real estate and it's like it's such an important investment it's the most for most people it's the most expensive purchase that they will ever make in their life the biggest mm -hmm. decision like where to live you know like where to sleep where to leave my shit right and they don't know how it works they don't do research and they like they just want to point to everybody else right like why isn't it the homeowner or the ballot buyers and the seller's responsibility even to make sure that they understand that thing and the implications of it before they actually so sign they got, the fucking thing. First of all, if realtors. They're not doing the no jobs longer, right. If they were no longer needed. We need a then period. The, the market would tell us. I think you need to take this to your lawyer, so, people. The bottom you line take is this people, before we sign it to people the lawyer. need to have somebody go over these things with them. The average person isn't going to do what you said, is doesn't Expensive. understand why it's, it's done. More money. They should have a realtor uh, handle that type of situation for them. Now, and it's amazing how, you know, the impression people always have is that their lawyer is expensive. Yeah. You so I can't go to my lawyer. He's going to charge me. That's a, yeah. I'm you just like, yeah, like but you hired a realtor. And he's like 10 times as much. <laughs> right? Right. But and he anyways, fucks it up. That, the, the, the realtor's role is very clearly uh, evident that the consumers believe that they need a realtor, and that's why realtors are in business. So and anybody can say this or that about realtors. It's the consumer that decides. And as of today, we're still in business. But these type of things should be easily solved by more transactions. That person is doing very little transactions and that they're not selling a lot to make such a big mistake like putting the deposit up top and the price down bottom and so no one picking up on that crazy so therefore i would say more transactions will solve that issue and uh like anything else you need more experience so i think there should be more um no uh, oversight for? mentor mentor mentee type of roles so like when you get your license like the first year you have to have you know under your license you got to have somebody else's name you got to be not just under a broker but under like another uh agent and then that agent is actually the one doing all the deals but you're just the one who's like bringing him the deals but he's the one doing all the paperwork like something like that that would make it more um onerous on a more experienced agent because the brokers don't care the brokers don't no. care right. they're just like how much are you pay me per month and what's my commit what's my yeah. commission every yeah. time you make a deal that's all they care about that's all they care about if they yeah. even the numbers game for them. All. If they even know who that guy is. Yeah. It's like, what? Right? Some guy just called me. I, I, I don't know. That guy. Yeah. I think I remember hiring him a couple I years ago. Remember his I remember his name. They don't know anything. All not right. Let's move clear. on. Let's move There's on. There's a We're lot ready. of crazy stuff. Like, okay, Where hold we on. on. We got two big major things that we definitely need to talk about. I okay. think talk this, uh, I don't even know. I don't want to say this wrong because I, I don't want to come across uh, in the wrong way, but we got this. Uh, massive brawl at the Hindu temple in Brampton, Brampton yeah. in the news again, after Khalistani lunatics showed up to protest in front of their temple. And when I say all fucking hell is breaking loose from coast to coast, because it happened in Surrey, BC as well, we've got this uh, Indian internal country conflict. 
happening here? We got a beef for some reason. And I, I tried the to bloods do versus crips. I tried to do research on it and to get down to the meat and potatoes of this thing and figure out why the fuck, why is it so big right now that it's happening in Canada? And yeah. I could not figure out a reason. Like, I'm this sure is it's something deep. from years ago, like it's the deep, 80s. And it's and it's and it's hard to uh, it's hard to explain, and that there's a lot why of emotion. Here, TK, but why here? You know what? The one thing I can tell you I'm is that tired um, of this shit, TK. it's hard to it's hard to understand in the in Irish. Okay, all right. In 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 Ireland in the Irish uh, war times, you know, because that person killed your uncle when you were a kid, you grew up hating them. Because that person bombed your school where your friend died. You grew up hating them. And yeah. you pass that on to generation to generation. And you are passionate about it. And that is, is a very, very difficult, deep-rooted thing that takes generations and generations to pass before all that uh, resentment uh, gets, uh, gets abolished. Fine, so, but like you know, people... I get it. But people and hopefully like... as they come here and people immigrate to Canada... And the good people of India are here, and they're here to stay. No. Um, these type of things will happen less and less as people will forget, and they'll be able to move on because these things are from. No, this is a long fucking time ago. crazy. You don't have. This is not appropriate behavior in a new country that brought you in and is giving you opportunities and taking care of you. It, you know what? You don't leave your country to just go be a fucking crazy person in the new country and cause all kinds of. Did you ever hear trouble. of the IRA? The IRA, yeah. like Irish the Republic Rifle Army. Association? No, that's what? NRA. It's IRA. Oh, okay. Irish right. Republic Army. The Irish Republic Army. I, look, yeah. I'm not Irish, TK. The Irish Republic Army noticed. and the I IRA is a yeah. serious, uh, you know, organization where, you know, there was all sorts of things that were caused in the U.S. over the years from them. And, you know, that was from, uh, like you know, back home, back home type of t type of conflicts and stuff like that. So I think people just got a hard on for the Indians right now. And so that's why it's easier to who are the Irish you know, mad at, though. Who is this IRA? Uh, who was their target? The state, uh, the the uh, Protestant and uh, British supporters. Oh, OK. Yeah. Fine. Right. So anyways, bottom line is this. People right now are upset. One, because we got a lot of new Indians. We got uh, all sorts of things happening with the economy right now. So everyone's blaming whoever the newest it's big crazy. group of people who've came in. It's got to be the Indians' fault. At one point, it was the Irish. At one point, it was the Jews. At one point, oh. it was the Italians. At one point, it was the Scott. It's just the way it goes. Right now, it's the Indians. Bottom line is this stuff shouldn't happen. And I watch the videos and all that kind of stuff. Let's talk about the police. Well, okay, so but there's, a, yeah, fine. The policeman who I guess yeah. had uh, some, some of that in the background running, mm. right? He walked in there, guns blazing, and uh, well, that's, that didn't work out good for him at all, did no, it? That's no, that's the kind of guy we don't need as a police officer. No, and that yeah. got the uh, prime minister of India involved, and he basically said, uh, Canada, get your shit together over yeah, there. Yeah, we don't need those. The we don't need those kind of guys. over there. But this right. has nothing to do with real estate, so let's move on, Daryl. Please. That's a big you. story. How is that not real estate related? It is it's not a real estate story. Let's right, talk fine. about your friend, Sam. Sam Mizrahi. Okay. Multiple articles this week about yeah. Sam. So I guess he is in not receivership. He's got uh, predator protection. Witness Basically, protection. Basically, they can't touch him, and then he can still touch some of his cash to be able to finish up a project. In Try and Ottawa. finish up a project in Ottawa. And so this is the same God, old story. And what's funny, guy. I I've got a, a fan of the show, a painter who's been messaging me for weeks, telling me about this, and he's like, I didn't get paid, and all these guys didn't get paid, and you know they're he. Paying stuff from one project to the other, which is a no no. Mm -hmm. And, and okay. So and his buddies, that his buddies are texting of, him. You read the text. Hold on a sec. On top of this, he also, there's this article that says, uh, developer behind Toronto's troubled mega tower accused of overpaying himself by like almost $60 million. So, of course. I have a unique perspective on this because I've been in the death spiral of financial hell before. Yeah. And it's not fun and it makes you do things that you know are not right. But you I think Rob Peter most, to pay Paul. Well, but most people in this situation, the idea was not to have a Ponzi scheme and to fuck everything up, right? Mo like he's trying to get through to the other side and you know make 
shit happen. But in doing that, you know, from time to time, you got to steal $60 million, right? Listen, not at once. Oh, just pay for the plane ticket to go slowly, and visit that guy and pay for surely. that lunch and pay for that vacation and pay for that car payment. And by the time it's all said and done, it's it's amazing how, like, even my own life, I can just see, like, if I could just take myself 10 years ago with the budget I had and the amount of money I could live on and how happy I was, like, it's amazing how your life just spires out, spirals out of control. You just yeah. need more and more money. Can you just get used to certain luxuries? Well, but you know, I don't even. It's, like, it's not only that. It's it's true I, though. That's well, that, true. his lifestyle is above and beyond the average person's. So for him, he probably it, didn't even notice that he overspent fifty eight million. He's like, no, you guys owe me eleven. That's right. Well, you I'm know? pretty sure that you got to be an extraordinary individual to not know that you're stealing an extra sixty million dollars. Okay, especially mm -hmm. when it just so happens that your financial uh, empire is in ruin and your name's being dragged through the mud. But again, it's like there's this death spiral where you just think, you know, I'll take a little bit from this project, I'll get this thing going, and then this thing will be settled, and I'll take a little from here, and I'll put... And what's the big deal if everything gets done and everybody ends up okay? I just have to make it to the other side. But most people aren't on board with the plan OK, and they don't care about you or Sam mm -hmm. or me or whoever's going through it. And I promise Sam is going through it in front of the world. Right. There's hundreds, if not thousands of people going through it, doing the same stupid, weird shit like across the country, across the world right now. Right. Like this is just what happens. Guys are scrambling. They're dying. They know they're about to die. And yeah, a lot of people, they want to keep up their lifestyle and keep up the charade and, you know, put money in their own pockets because they think, you know, it's going to help them weather the storm. A lot of them get away with that shit too. So, mm -hmm. so, but it's not a unique experience. It just so happened that this guy had such big balls that he did such a big project that it put him on like the world stage right now. But yeah. like there's 200, we said uh, a couple weeks ago, zone sites for sale. Like those are not all just because the plan was to sell his own site. And even if it was the plan, that turned out to be a really bad plan right now, I guess, depending on what the product is, right? Yeah. So, like, how crazy is it going to get? Because now they're giving him creditor protection, which just means that he can, like, not be bankrupted by his creditors right now while he tries to figure it out for it's two like a 10 day though weeks. yeah yeah so like what's he gonna figure no <laughs> who's giving this idiot money right now yeah yeah he's yeah. not an idiot but whatever yeah who's yeah, giving yeah. this guy money this guy in a right very now, bad situation yeah in a horrible situation in front of everybody it's not like you can go hey um I don't know, like you probably didn't hear or like you just go and like you assume they didn't hear what's going on with you and you try and borrow money. It's like, how yeah, do you yeah. even do that? You've already borrowed time? money from all your friends. These guys Everybody. are so connected with so many rich people Everybody. and uh, they're not they're not uh, stupid people. No, there's vultures so. waiting around. For and we wish you luck. We hope you come out of this and that your buildings get built oh. and that you could build They'll get built you know, many more buildings in another country. Um, Under after, a different name with a different <laughs> face. Right? After all your businesses have, have collapsed. To you we there. appreciate it. Well, so there's that. And then, I don't know, condo completions are soaring in Toronto for now. That's kind of, uh, you know, on par with what we've been saying. Sure. It's all yeah, the yeah, old yeah. shit. The buildings are coming up. They've got to complete them. But that um, means uh, some danger ahead, Will Robinson. Yeah, I mean, the danger. problems are there. Mark right. obviously is dealing with those things uh, firsthand. He's told us many times. We talked yeah. about the one bulk buy of units from a developer last week. That may or may not be true. But um, of course, this is this is this is what we're going to start to see now. More inventory come online. More uh, resale inventory because they're going to close and people are going to say, I can't like HST credit or no HST credit. I need to sell this sucker because uh, I just closed it with yeah. private funds, borrowed money from this guy, that guy, and I need to get out, yeah. you know? And there's a yeah. lot of buildings. There's a ton of buildings out there right now that you can just go online and you can just see that just close. And there's like, I looked at one the other day at um, Leslie and uh, Eglinton. There's just like a ton of units yeah. for sale, you know, some from the developers, some from, which is uh, crazy. Can you imagine? It's like, who, who, like you look at what a resale condo would be and you look at what prices they're asking, you're like, who would buy this? 
can you imagine it makes actually no sense to buy these prices and you know you it's close what they but then you close only to yeah. get fucking crushed on the purchase price because like you're yeah. saying if you look at the building and there's 22 options for you yeah no one's like, gonna buy it no one's buying these things i'm telling the you the prices happen. are absolutely astronomical some of them and these aren't even peak prices we need... but you look at what a 1400 square foot 1400 per square foot condo looks like and you're just like why would i pay for that i just think it's so unbelievable that we went from like this strong position in the world as this like super solid banking system that could weather all storms we got it all figured out in the pre-construction market you know we got pre-sales everybody's safe and mm -hmm. like even with, with with this mentality of trying to protect the real estate market all this fraud, all these shenanigans, all these schemes, all these scams, like yeah. just end up bubbling up to the surface and just crushing the thing. And if Everyone if all these schemers would just fucking realize, like, stop the bullshit, stop the shenanigan shenanigans. Let's just kind of have like this nice, steady, normal, proper real estate market for people to live in, like not this crazy, it, it turned into a stock market. It, mm -hmm. it's so volatile and that, that's what i was saying to somebody the other day it's like the last four or five years look at the fucking markets every market doubled in the last four or five years real estate stocks crypto everything's doubled like how how do you normalize this now yeah. right and how, how do you, you come back now how do you, you know but without get everybody's going expectations because now everybody's investment uh, expectations are, are, are risen. People's lifestyle. This is another big thing too. I was just talking about it with the, with Sam as as far as why he spent that much money. Sam is people's Rahi? life. Yeah, oh. like talking about it. We right should now. have him on the show next week. Yeah. Actually, we should ask. Yeah, yeah. So it's like we're like literally looking at like people's lifestyles just like get out of control. And so all these people who do scam, all these people who are up to no good, like the money's gone. Like it's never like he had the money under the mattress yeah. and the money was re was collected. He was he put it in a bank account and it was uh you know invested in GICs. It's he never like traceable, that. yeah. They're just like he had bought three luxury mansions over in uh you know Belize and he had six power boats and he's two wearing eight hundred pound gold chains around just his like, neck. All the money's gone. Like it's just like Diamond it's just amazing started. when you make that fast money how quickly it goes yeah but you even know? if you don't make the fast money what if you look at how many second or third generation like real estate families there are out there right now that are like you got these giant i know i know families that are in the third generation that are like nobody in the next generation wants to be partners with anybody else in that generation and they all just want the money right yeah. they don't want to deal with all this shit and all these headaches they're like just, how much can we sell this for how much, right? And you're going to see even more and more of that because like these families got bigger, right? So second yeah. generation, okay, maybe you got a sister, a brother, three of them, four of them. I mean, that's crazy. If you got five people in a family, I don't know if that's normal, but like now when you get to the next generation down, there's like 12 people that got to be a partner in all this shit. Right. Mm -hmm. And most of them, they got to have baggage from the past. Their parents hate each other. God knows what the hell's going on. So yeah. all that, but there's an opportunity, I think, coming. Maybe if the market just doesn't go completely to hell, like the comment section keeps telling us it's going to. There's a weird kind of divergence. Of there's now, a lot of no? pain out there, but unfortunately for those guys, um, there's again. just too many too many people right now still need a place to live. Too as long as that happens, a place to live. it'll be a very slow. I'm not saying the market's going to not continue to go down. I'm telling you, I think it is going to keep going down. I still, I still see uh, prices coming down further. Where are all these construction last? workers no, no. going as the completions but complete? There's always going right? to be that demand, sort of keeping it up and 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 keeping it as stable as as it is right now, which is the most likely of scenarios. There's very, very, very little like plausibility in the market taking another steep twenty to five percent dive, mm -hmm. right? Which is what it took. That was like multiple factors. One, it was elevated too high to the introduced higher boring costs so the, the optimism left the market and people's ability to borrow was decreased so then that way you know there was just no way they could pay those prices even if they wanted to right so but better, better going dwelling. forward bearing any like major war that canada's involved with on like home soil yeah. um you know the best the worst case scenario for the market would be a, a slow decline in prices for years to come 
that would be it. Well, I forget Which what brings Better stability. Dwelling said. Better Dwelling said something here. Better yeah, dwelling real estate can... prices roll back to 2021 levels near technical crash. And if you read it, I guess Toronto went down 19%, which is like the home 1% price index. Percent away from Not the average price, a, a the home crash. Price index. Is yeah. 20% considered a, a market crash in real estate? No, I guess so. If that's a technical crash, sure. So I mean, the bears that's are something not that's happy always with that? What's a crash? What's a correction? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, it feels it's like we definitely corrected. I'm sure for a lot of people, it feels like we definitely crashed. And I, it probably will feel for a bunch of people like, oh, shit, I didn't time that one right again. Yeah. Oops. Damn, people I'm never getting into say this, this was a crash. Day. Nobody's going to look back and say, well, back in... The 2022 time, the first the crash. market corrected itself and was eventually no, it crashed and a lot of people burned and their ships were never to be seen again. You know what I mean? Like let's not be, let's not beat around the bush. So, but when people put up that graph where it's like a crazy bubble and then yeah. you you kind of come back down again and then you spike up and then you fucking crash. Like we didn't have yeah. the fucking crash part yet. Why not? We had that. If you're having the ten years, go look at a ten year up. line. A ten year line. Yeah. Editor, put up a 10-year line. Let's see what that uh, looks of, like. Of, can... of uh, Toronto house prices. Yeah. What does that look like, a 10-year line? I can't well, see. Well, you just drew right there. Just ching like this. It went, you were going up, and then you're like... Oh, we did that. We dropped. And here we are today. That's it. So we did yeah. that part. All right. Well, that's good cool. to know. You're good. You're good. Let's good talk shot. about... Um, couple things we talked about yeah, it last week about, about converting yeah we're almost done okay. uh talking about converting office buildings so the office uh availability peak. still rising so you got vacancies still on the rise but they might be at peak is that the way it's worded could but be might, might be nearing peak that's just might like be the most nearing like peak. you know jesus christ almighty <laughs> non-committal statement ever so and now they're I mean, like oh fuck now we can't do those conversions they fucking knock what that are people what are people doing stuff. i mean amazon's got everybody back five days a week um, I was talking to a guy from Canadian Tire this week. He's three days a week. Um, I got people who are investors tire, looking like to in buy the office? offices. In yeah. the office, Canadian Tire? Canadian Tire. Uh, yeah, like, like on head the office. floor? Head office. Head office. Head office. Yeah, okay. um, I got, uh, yeah, and, uh, investors calling me about offices saying, hey, this might be a good time to buy. They think the uh, offices will all be returning back downtown soon. So, but are these people, these are companies that own the building and like pay themselves no, rent somehow? Lease bases. Mostly leasehold. Lease so what the fuck do they care? Why don't they just get out of the fucking lease? Why don't they let people work from home? It's so much cheaper. Well, they've got their own reasons. I mean, it's uh, productivity. It's uh, team culture. It's uh, different reasons. I mean, there's uh, every company there. There's lots of data out there on that. You can read about it. But hmm. I think that that's, I think it's good reason uh, to not be just having everybody working uh, off site and you don't really know what people are doing and you don't really yeah. know how efficient they're being if they're working another job, you know, got to be away if they're but just yeah, in Mexico, like all the time, just like, you know, with yeah, their laptop I've, on their on their lap. I don't even know what I'm saying because I've pointed that out probably more than anybody because okay. my I got good. friends that pull that kind of shit. Good. Well, um, today. What else you got? Do we actually have more shit to talk about? Do we no, I think, I think that's about it. I think that's about it. We did good today. Know. I mean, we we're talking good. a lot about the articles. You know, maybe, maybe we're doing, maybe we got too many articles. Too I don't know. Many articles. Many articles are coming in the show, Joe. I just like to talk to you. You know, I just like to sit down and. I wish I could talk and... more about what I uh, am going through with the developments right now, but it's like yeah. it's very Top we're in stuff. a sticky period right now. Top and, secret. You know. Things what I can say is on. this. I will I will say this. I will say this. That you are stick handling the development process yes. like Wayne Gretzky like Wayne circa 1987. Gretzky. Whoa. All right. Just so you know, just so anybody who's listening like right now, the stick handling that is happening right now from Daryl Frankfort. Like a politician. He's number 69. Right now. Number 69. And, uh, and uh, he is okay, absolutely no. protecting that puck left, right, and center. And, you know, he's about to set up somebody else on the team for a very big goal. The game I winning. am All right? the so center good, and the goalie and you're the coach, awesome. DK. And, and we the coach. You're doing crushing awesome. it. But you're crushing it. It's at like this weird point that I don't want to uh, interrupt the progress by opening up my mouth. Which, sure, but like you know, this you're watching there's going to be grow here. something that goes wrong in everything, and this is just the development sure. stage. Wait till the sales part happens. Wait till the oh, yeah. uh, uh, construction part. Things go wrong. That's what they do. 
things. Remember what don't, Sam said? I don't Sam know about wrong. Next to one of his friends, he said, many people would have given up a long time ago if they were dealing with the pressures that I'm dealing with. This is oh, what makes a good developer. Sure. I the mean, people but, who can't handle it, they back off. They don't even get involved. They, they fold. The people who can are the ones who come out the other side. Well, I hope that he learned his lessons from this, and I hope he's young enough to have enough chutzpah to continue and try at it again. Somewhere and else, I, not in Toronto. Toronto is, there's not that many people willing to do that stuff, and he I must know, have learned his, a lot. He dreams of too big, so go somewhere else. Go to Dubai. Dubai, somewhere like that. Go there. to one of those places right there. If you don't pay them back, they cut off your head. You know what I mean? Like, just go to one of those places. This that way you'll make sure you pay everybody back and, and do a good job. Yeah. Well, TK, at this pace, with the political um, acumen that I've garnered over the years, I think running for something at some point soon... Is not in your future. Sense. Yes, I agree. Well, it shouldn't be in my future, but I feel this <laughs> calling to be, you know, maybe yeah. the prime minister one day, TK. Maybe, you maybe. Imagine Absolutely. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. When that day comes, I'll let you know. Well, for now, I'll settle for being the co-host of the Canadian Real Estate Show and friend of TK Butler. Good choice. I think that That's might no consolation be prize. That's top one of my price. better choices of the day. Yeah. TK, always a pleasure. Absolutely. Mr. Morris, Mr. Croissant, and Mr. Conahan? Conahan. Conahan. Conahan? Conahan. Conahan. That's what I said first. Conahan. Well, all the team, Mr. Aiden, everybody, thank you. And what a wonderful show we put on for everybody today. Mr. Trump, especially. Thank Mr. you. What President again. Trump. We hope to have you on again. Maybe we'll have Sam on next week, TK. This is just. Till the, till the next one. What kind of show is this thing?